Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. You're welcome, viewers. Good morning to this morning devotion of our Daily Fountain. Uh, the topic for today say one thing we should not forget. One thing we should not forget. The text is taken from 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 8 to 10. But do not ignore this one thing, beloved, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years. A thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some count slowness, but is forbearing towards you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise and the element will be dissolved with fire and the earth and the works that are upon it will be burnt. Hallelujah. Uh, looking at this text, as Apostle Peter in his last chapter, in this last chapter of his second letter to believers, remind that God is not slow in dealings with men. Now, when we look at things around us, that's why the topic say one thing we should not forget. One thing we should not forget. The tendency that sometimes we we'll forget that a lot of things in our lives, especially both of eternity and the things of God, is there. Now, in looking at this text, we can see it in two ways. In the first sight, sometimes when you are going through some things in this life, it seems as if God has forgotten you. And because of it, the tendency that you become discouraged and give up is there. But I think we should learn from this verse. He said in verse 8 that God's timing is different from our own. In other words, all the years you think you have spent in one situation or circumstances or the other, according to what Peter is saying here, for as long as God is consigned, it may have been one year, two years, three years, ten years, fifteen years, but as long as God is consigned, he says it's not just even like one day. Because God lives in eternity where there is no time. But we are controlled with time. And so, the realm where we are and where God is, there is a big demarcation. And this is why God's dealing with us. Sometimes we fail to understand because we are seeing it that it has taken a long time, longer time. But as long as God is consigned, even one day have not passed. And this is in line of what Isaiah 55 verse 8 said, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my way. So just like the heaven is higher than the earth, so are my thoughts and my ways. So the thought of God 
is always different from our own. The ways of God is always different from our own. And that was why the psalmist said, He showed Moses his ways, but Israel knew his act. And so Israel knows the act of God. They knew the power of God. They knew what God can do. And that is why anytime they didn't see the miraculous power of God, they begin to murmur and grumble. But he said, Moses knows the way of God. In other words, Moses understood that even when God seems to be silent, he's still walking. Moses understood that even when it seems as if God is silent, that does not mean he's not there. He's still close by. And so my brothers and sisters, I want us to know that whatever the circumstances may be, whatever the situation may be, just know that God is working on your behalf, is working in your case, is working in that situation you thought he has abandoned you. I read a story of uh, someone who is passing through a valley like this, Psalm 23 described, Valley of the Shadow of Death. And all along he will look back and see a foot following him. And then when he comes to the place where the, the fear was so intense, danger here and there, he looked back and did not see the footstep again. He was so terrified, so worried, that he shivingly and fearfully keep moving. So when he crossed that path, he looked back again and saw the footstep. And he was surprised and he asked. He said, why did you abandon me when the going got tough? And the voice replied, the footstep you are seeing that time, which seems like your own, is no longer yours. When you are in that danger, I carried you on my shoulder. If not, you wouldn't have crossed that place. So my brothers and sisters, when you look at how circumstances and how things are happening in your life, and somehow you survived it, it should tell you that even though it seems God is silent, that is working on your behalf. Now, the second aspect, when sometimes we think if Jesus promise of his coming over these years have not come, maybe probably he will not come again. And that can make us to relax. And so Peter is reminding us that look that the coming of Jesus still remain intact. The coming of Jesus still remain. No matter how long it seems. No matter how long it seems as if he has stayed. We should bear in mind that come what may, that God will fulfill his promise. God's promises are real and must surely come to pass. Just like Habakkuk says, he says, the promise is for an appointed time. He says, even though it tarries, wait for it. For each will not tarry. He says, but for at the end, he shall surely speak. And so my brothers and sisters, in as much as it seems as if the coming of Jesus He's staying longer than we expected. I want you to know that he will surely come. Just like when as Paul was addressing the Thessalonian church, he came to a point where they were discouraged because at the beginning of the preaching of the gospel, they thought that very soon that Jesus will come. And that was why many seems to be abandoning their works, trying to just prepare and wait. And Paul have to say no. 
In as much as you are waiting for his coming, you also need to continue your work here on earth. And as a result, because of the things you will be going through, maybe the persecution you are encountering because you are a Christian, and then you are thinking that very soon it will end because Jesus will come, and it has taken some years. The tendency you get discouraged and give up is there. And Peter is saying, no, don't. Because for us, we are counting of 1,000 years, over 2,000 years ago. He promised he's coming back again. And now yet we have not seen him. Many generations have come and gone. And it seems he will not come again. I want you to know that even though it takes long, he will come. And that was why John, in addressing the, in his gospel, seeing the discouragements of the Christians, he said to them, in the beginning was that world. The world that made the heavens and the earth is still the same world that has become flesh and dwelt among us. In other words, if the world has not failed, from Genesis till this point, be rest assured that the word of God will not fail. God's promises remain. It's an eternal promise and eternal covenant. So my brothers and sisters, we should not take God's patience for granted and get yourself indulged in things. Even if it stay long, God's punishment of sin still stands. The Bible said that because punishment against evil are delayed or tarried, therefore the heart of the sons of men are given to do evil. And so we shouldn't take God's promises for granted. And that is why we are called for to live a righteous life. The Bible said those who have this hope must purify themselves. And so, my brothers and sisters, I want you to know that the day will come when we least expect it. A day will come when the trumpet will sound and every man will receive the reward of his doing, whether good or bad. And so, I pray as you meditate this week, this day, Today be Monday, 9th of December, that this world will be in the consciousness of your mind in anything you do. And that will help you to order your step aright. May the Lord give you the strength in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for today. Thank you for the word we have heard. Your word is always an encouragement to us. And as you have spoken to us this morning, help us to go forth in the strength of this word. And whatever we do this week will be for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you.